the topic is uh, is suffering is real or an illusion of the mind. Who do you think? Do you really feel suffering? Okay, we, we, we see uh, how it is uh, really it is suffering real or uh, uh, just an illusion of the mind. This is in a one way uh, you can have a kind of uh, understanding you know, theoretically. Theoretically, understanding uh, is, is good for us to, uh, to get some knowledge. And beyond that, we, shall, we see how our experience, uh, experientially, how it is a real or uh, any vision of the mind. Have you heard about the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta? You all heard, right? Buddha's first Dhamma talk. The first Buddha's first Dhamma talk is Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. It is in, the, in, in, in two places mentioned. The, one of the references is uh, Sangha Parikaya 56. Yeah. In that uh, Sutta, Buddha explained basically three things. Uh, first thing is middle path. Avoiding two extremes and come to the middle. And also Buddha explain in that sutta four noble truth. Four noble truth. I think you all have heard the four noble truth, right? Here there are no people, those who don't know four noble truth, right? It is easier for me. <laughs> you all know the four noble truth, right? Anybody who don't know the four noble truth? At least just to the wording. What is the four noble truth? Dukkha, Samudaya, Samudaya, uh, Nirodha, Nirodha Maka. And in, it's, uh, in English, suffering, suffering, cause of suffering, cessation of suffering, part leading to cessation of the suffering. Okay. So, Buddha <coughs> initially make a framework of the Buddha's teaching. Uh, actually, even though it is a, a kind of framework, very popular framework of the Buddhist teaching, but it is not the only framework. There are many, many angles to look at the Buddha's teaching. This is one angle to look at the Buddha's teaching, or the true nature of the reality. So in that, uh, so, so Buddha says that, that there is a suffering, and there is a, a cause of suffering, and there is a cessation of suffering, and there is a part, there is a cessation of suffering. Okay, so Buddha explained in that sutta about suffering. Now, after that, Buddha, what the Buddha says? Remove the suffering. Avoid the suffering or understand the suffering? Four noble truth to be understand, right? It's very very important to understand. <laughs> Four noble truth to be understood. To be understood. So understanding is the only thing you have to do. You only thing you can do also. You cannot do more than that. Only thing you can do is understand the Four Noble Truth. So understand the Four Noble Truth. Get the first Noble Truth. Noble Truth of Suffering. Noble Truth of Suffering. To be understood. And Buddha understood it. He has himself understood the nature of the four, um, the nature of the suffering. Okay, with the mention in that, what is suffering? Now these monks, 
is normal to those stress. Here is stress, a uh, word use the stress instead of suffering. It is both same. Stress. Birth is stressful. Is it? Birth is suffering. But you all are celebrating happy birthday. <laughs> Isn't it? Every year you feel like a happy birthday, right? Every year in your birthday. So, it is not uh, uh, really suffering for our uh, normal conventional understanding, right? But um, somehow, Buddha says it is also suffering. It is stressful. Aging is suffering, is it? Aging is suffering? You ask from a child around 10 years old, they won't become aging, they won't become a big man, they won't become a big girl. You ask, they, they quickly want to become, you know, even the, you also say, sometimes you tell your children, you, you eat this, this food and you can, you know, easy, you know, you can grow faster. So sometimes aging also not so suffering sometimes. But when you are young, maybe when you are 5, 6, 10 years old, you want to become old quickly, faster. Then when you become around 20, uh, 20, 25, 30, you want to stay with that age, right? And after 30, uh -huh, now stop. <laughs> now stop. Now the aging is suffering, right? 35, 40, 50, 60. Now you don't want that aging anymore. So you can see that sometimes we want the aging and sometimes we don't want. So 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 that's also sometimes aging we, even though we say aging is suffering, it's not always the case. I mean our understanding, the normal conventional understanding is not up to what the Buddha says. Okay, death is suffering. Are you sure? Are you sure? Death is suffering? Whose death? Your death or someone else's death is suffering? You experience what? Someone else's death is suffering, right? Have you experienced Death, suffering of death? Anyone experience? <laughs> if you experience, you are now here, right? So, even though we say death is suffering, is not talking about not, not talking about other people's death. We have another one uh, for, to talk about that. Uh, you know, the separation of the loud one is suffering. That, that is that the other people did. So what is this death? This is your death. You own it. But that also you don't understand it, right? I mean we have to understand, we have to be really critical about these things, whether these things are really be understood or not. The death is suffering is not about other people death. It's talking about your death. So you never experience that death. So you cannot really say it is suffering. Whenever we think about death, we mostly remember someone else's death, someone else's funeral, not your. We have to be alert about you. And sorrow, lamentation, bodily pain, distress, despair are stressful. And association with the unloved is stressful. Association with unpleasant people is stressful. Separation from the loved one is stressful. Not getting what you want is stressful. And also getting what you don't want also is stressful, right? Okay. That is the sum description. That is a word description. But this is the very important part. Buddha says, in short, in brief, summarize all the suffering. 
he summarized all the suffering into one. That is, five clinging aggregates are stressful or suffering. In other words, clinging to five aggregates is the suffering. This is we need to understand that. Five clinging to five aggregate is the suffering. And here what now we are going to do to understand that five aggregates or understand the clinging five aggregates. What is five aggregates? What is five aggregates? You can say Rupa Vedana Sanya Sankara Vinyana Those who have studied about Pali Rupa Vedana Sanya Sankara Vinyana In other words, four in, in, in English Four Feeling Perception Mental formation and consciousness. Do you understand this all this thing? For feeling perception. Yeah, we will understand later. But but basically you have to understand at this point that these five aggregate is nothing else but your mind. Even though we say mind, actually it's not mind. It's five aggregate is your thoughts. Within one thought, these five aggregates are happening. These five function of one thought. This is the five aggregate is about all about thought. You know the thought, right? We all we have a thought. So five aggregate is five different angle of the thought or thought process or working of the, the, the nature of the thought. We have to be, we have to understand this and very clearly. This is nothing else about thought, but this it has a five angle to look. This five aggregate. Rupa is one way to look at the thought. Feeling is one way to look at the thought. Perception is one way to look at the thought. Mental formation is one way to look at the thought. Consciousness is one way to look at the thought. It is like, you know, you know the, when this, uh, you, you know, somebody is in another country and they are asking what is the BGF. And then somebody take picture from that side send a photo to, to that country, to another person in somewhere else. He never been to a BGF before. So, just looking one photo, can he understand full picture of this JB? Uh, <laughs> BGF. Am I right? So, you send another photo inside here. Now, can he understand full picture? Maybe slightly better understanding, right? So, you get another photo of another flow, another photo is another flow, and you send few angles, few photos, let's say you send five photos. So, he might, he, he, he can have a better understanding about what is BGF, right? So, this five aggregate is five different angles, five different photos of the mind. Five different angles to look the look the thought. Whenever we say actually we talk about mind. So whenever we say mind, then we have an idea that uh, there is something called mind. Something called mind. We are not talking about something called mind. We are talking about thoughts. Thoughts. So. Thought, collection of the thoughts 
the stream of thoughts sometimes we can call mind. The, the water, drop of water, each and every drop of water is flowing. What we call it? River, right? But can you can you find can you catch the river? Can you touch the river? Actually, sometimes we say river is flowing. Oh, the nature of flowing we call river. Nature of flowing we call river, right? It's not that river never flow. So same way. The mind not thinking, the thinking itself called mind, thinking process itself called mind. So these things we need to really understand that it is very obvious that you, you can understand that you never see the mind, you never touch the mind, you never feel the mind, but you know that you have thoughts. It's also invisible, but you have some sense of idea that you have a thoughts. So these five aggregates are all about thoughts. Okay, now look at this, uh, our topic of this today, uh, Tama talk is Pena Sutta. In other words, it says uh, Pena Pindupama Sutta also. Uh, anyway, its uh, name is the Lump of Four. Pena Sutta, uh, Sanghita Nika, 95. So in that Sutta, Buddha says, Buddha explained about these five aggregates, the nature of five aggregates. He says, four, a basic four is like a glob of four. And feeling is like a bubble, perception, a mirage, fabrication. Uh, like a banana tree and consciousness is a magic trick. Probably you don't understand what exactly what is the global form. Uh, this is, is a, a lump of form or global form. You can see this, you know, that is small, small the form get together and like it seems like big form, right? And this is the, uh, the lump of four. The form is like lump of four. What a form, right? <laughs> so you are mixing. So form means that, let's say first we take four is uh, like initial, let's say it's an image, image. It's not only image, sound also for you know the image, the seeing also for hearing also for what else we have smelling, smell also for touch also for taste also for so when we say for is all these five senses. Not only that, there's another thought also, another form. You know, we can think, we can think something. That there's another form, mental form. Okay, so this form is like a lump of form. What is the nature of this lump of form? What would the main mean by this lump of form? What do you think about this form? This form, it, especially this kind of form, appear why? Especially when the water is polluted, right? Water is not so good, especially this one. This kind of form created when the water is not so clean. If the water is so clean, uh, we cannot see like this. Uh, the form is not very visible. The, it is still the, the lump of four, but not very visible. It quickly, quickly disappear, right? But these forms can stay for long because of the polluted water. The same way, 
When the mind is full of ignorance, you can see the four most very clear. When the mind is clear, mind is uh, not polluted with the ignorance, it cannot make form. Even though there is form, is like very uh, shallow form. There is form is like a lump of form. And feeling is like a water bubble. And here what I want to mention here is, you see that if you go into that, even though it seems like something, if you go into that, is small, small, small form, right? It's small bubble. Each and every bubble inside is empty. So nothing inside. And feeling like a water bubble. You see that bubble? It quickly appears and disappears. But there is uh, something called bubble, but inside again, empty. Perception is like a mirage. Have you seen the mirage? You know, when the, especially when we are driving sometimes, in the farm, you can see that there is some water, right? Not only water, you can see the reflection of the trees, mountain, it's like very, very, very real, right? What is very real? I heard that some animal is running towards that uh, water and finally they cannot find the water and then they are exhausted and then, you know, when they go to that place, they find ice oh, very far. They go, then, then they run to that. When they go to there, it's some more far. They go to the more and more, they, they exhaust running, uh, looking for the water in the mirage. Even though we smile, we, we laugh to the animals, we also do the same thing. Buddha says perception is like a mirage. It seems like they are, but actually it is not there. Okay, uh, volition or chetana or a mental uh, uh, intention is like a uh, a volition like a plantain trunk means that uh, 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 banana trunk. When you peel the banana, the trunk, each and every uh, you know layer inside, you cannot find any substance, any hard core. This intention also do not have any core and. Consciousness is like illusion. What do you see here? What do you see? Without that? Dark and dark. Dark and, and rabbit, right? Dark and rabbit or two ducks? Or two, duck, two rabbits? Somehow, you, you cannot exactly say it's rabbit or duck, right? The way you look at it, it is, you know, it appears. If you look at the duck, you see the duck. You, you, you see the duck, right? If you re see the rabbit, then you see the rabbit, right? So, you see what is there or you see what you want to see? You see what you want to see. Right? There's the illusion of your mind. So, theoretically, Buddha initially said that Dukkha is nothing else than clinging to the fire aggregates. What is fire aggregates now? All these fire aggregates means that all your th thought is just an empty illusion. Right? Empty illusion. So, suffering is also another form, another thought. So, that also another illusion. Cessation of the Dukkha. Seeing thus, the well instructed disciple of the noble ones grow disenchanted with form. 
these centralities, he, 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 you know, he not attached to the form, disenchanted with feeling, disenchanted with the perception, disenchanted with, enchanted with the fabrication, disenchanted with consciousness. Disenchanted, he become dispassionate. Through dispassion, he is released. With release, there is a knowledge of release. He discern that work is ended and a holy life is fulfilled. The task is done. There is nothing further for this world. So all you have to understand is this. The emptiness, the voidness, the illusion of this mind, of these thoughts. So once you understand this thought is an illusion, so you are not anymore clinging to that. You not it's not that you're not clinging, but there you cannot cling any anymore. It is like you know uh, there is a ghost somewhere in your neighborhood. You know that ghost is for uh, last two, uh, last maybe one hundred years, two hundred years. That ghost is there. So all your uh, your grandfathers, grandmothers, a few generation is scared with that ghost. And your parents also scared, you also scared, and everyone in the uh, village is scared with that ghost. There is a ghost in a particular place. So, what, so because of that, you, you know, you, you really feel pain of that, is the, 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 the fear. And there is a ghost there. So, one day, one uh, brave man go to that place. And can he investigate that ghost? What, what is this ghost? Then he, 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 he sees something is moving. Really something is moving like a hand is moving. So then everybody thinking that is the ghost. So then he, he really investigates what is this moving part? And then he realized that this is nothing else but there is a, there's a branch in this side and there is a line from the other side and that line, the line is there and the branch, when the branch is always moving that is also moving, but nobody investigates last 20 to let, let's say 50 years, and everybody thinks this is a, there is a ghost. Nobody investigate, so everybody is scared to that ghost. So before that man is investigated, there is a ghost or not? Before he discovered, there is a ghost, and once it's discovered. What happened to the ghost? Actually, there was no ghost from the very beginning also, right? There is no ghost at this moment also, right? And there is no ghost in the future also, right? But that man go there and investigate, uh, you know, in, in himself and then come back to the village and tell, there is no ghost there. Do you think that villagers accept or not? They don't accept. They think that this man is crazy. This uh, we 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 have been, you know, we know that this ghost is there for a long, long time. How can you say there is no ghost? Even though you heard it, there is no ghost. Still, you have fear. Still, there is a ghost. And one day, you decided to go there and look your, yourself. You realize that there is no ghost. Then only your fear will go away. Unless that, how many people come and tell you also, you cannot fully trust it. The same way, this ghost has been seen by the Buddha. And Buddha tells to everyone, here there is no ghost. This is there, it seems like ghost, but there is no ghost. Don't afraid for that. But you never, you never able to listen. You never able to feel it. But because of the trust to the Buddha, the trust the person who says this, you go there with a scared, with, with really trembling feeling, you go there and you forget all your life, taking the risk of your life, you investigate 
and you realize to yourself that there is no cause. Then only you are suffering to that cause is ended really. So the same way, Buddha telling this um, repeatedly in many, 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 many ways that there is no cause here and you have to look at yourself. You have to experience yourself that there is no cause here. Cause is what? That this world is real. This thought is real. Uh, I'll take the last one, uh, the, the magic of the mind, uh, the consciousness of. Now suppose that magician or magician uh, apprentices were to display a magic trick at a major intersection. Major intersection. He do a magic trick in the crossroad. Both uh, both sides, the all four sides there is road. He stay in the middle. Why would they say this one is? Because it is very very visible. You still you can't see the magic. A man with good eyesight. This is very important. You must have good eyesight, word to see, observe it, ap appropriately examine to him, seeing it, observing it, appropriately examining it, it would appear, it would appear empty, void, without substance, empty, void and without substance. For what substance would there be a magic tricks? Magic trick is magic, right? It is not real, right? In the same way, man sees, observe, appropriately examine any consciousness that is past, future. See, past, future, present, internal, external, blatant, subtle, common, sublime, far and near. This eleven kind of dimension, eleven kind of thoughts. To him, seeing it, observing it, appropriately examining it, would appear. It would appear empty, void, without substance. For what substance? Would there be in consciousness? Thus, my first system arose should be aggregated by day and night, mindful alert should be discerned, all factors should make himself, uh, his own refuge should lie his at this. Uh, I would say that one word, sir. Uh, This mind, this the, the without a, when when you not understanding mind is said to be a murderer. It's killing you every moment when you not understand this five aggregates. So you can read this sutta um, uh, more and uh, when you have free time. Okay, now let's make an experiment. Now you can see a monk, right? Everybody careful listen, even though you have take some time. Careful listen to this one. You can see a monk, right? This seeing of monks belongs to this side or belongs to that side? Take only from your from that you think that only you are here now. Don't think about other people. They you and me. Now you seeing a monk, right? That monk's side is belongs to that side or this side? Belongs that side of monk. Belongs to this side or this side? This side, right? So, monks is coming from that side to this side or this side to that side? <laughs> so, 
Perception is where? Here or there? Here. Eh? There. Feeling? Here or there? Here. Mental intention? Here or there? Consciousness? Here or there? There, right? Then root of the form is here or there? Here. Here. So now you see Mark. How many of you here now? Maybe about 25 people, right? I think more than that. Let's say 25 people. How many monks here now? <laughs> How many monks? Each and every individual you see a monk, right? So how many monks? 25 monks. Isn't it? No. Then you said that earlier you said that the form is belongs to this side. Feeling is belongs to this side. Perception is belongs to this side. Intention is belongs to this side. Consciousness is belongs to this side. And what is come from here? So the mind created inside your mind. I tell you. Let's say. How many of you know that this is Bhante Indra? Please raise your hand. Okay. So, okay, here, there are four people, right? All, only, only four people recognize as Bhante Indra. Other people, here there is no Bhante Indra, right? Correct? For other people, here there is no Bhante Indra, right? Now maybe you know. <laughs> but, but before, when, when you sit down here first, there is no Bhante Indra here, right? For others, <coughs> what, what is here? It's a monk, right? Let's say, here, there is a, you know, some completely stranger coming here. Let's say, uh, you know, some far away, you know, foreigners come here and sit down here. Does he see a monk? Does he see a monk? He don't know anything about Buddhism. He don't know anything about monk. He don't know anything about, uh, you know, the religious thing. He just come out of sudden and sit here. Does he see a monk? Huh? Okay, he's here, person, right? He's here, person, a human. <coughs> okay, now I bring a small two years old child here. Does he see a man? Two years old child. Does he see a man or woman? He don't see. Two years. Our child doesn't see a man or woman. <coughs> he don't have this idea of a man. He still has some kind of arm. He's a human, you know. Let's say <coughs> I bring three-month-old child. He also has eyes, right? He also has eyes, right? Okay. So now does that child see a man, human, person, monk, Bhante Indratana, or Buddhist monk, or Sri Lankan monks? Uh, Theravada monks, all these things he see or not? What he see? Form means basic image, right? Basic image, right? Image is as shape or he see as a colors. He just see colors, right? Four years, um, three months old child, he see a colors, right? Okay, let's say now you all are three months old children. What do you see? What do you see now? Here? Some colors. Some colors. But even you don't know it is colors, right? You have that some sense of, some, some sense of feeling 
Let's say that you see a color. Let's say it's also wrong. Let's say you see a color. Yeah, different combination of colors, right? Different combination of colors. There is no man here, there is no human here, there is no person here, there is no monk here, there is no Theravada monk here, there is no HDB monk here, there is no Bhante Hidratana or any person here. You see here? Colors. Can you feel your left leg? Left leg, foot, the the toes of your feet, toes of your feet. Can you feel it? Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. I mean, while opening your eyes, you feel your toes. Feel it. Fully feel it. Feel the sensation of your toes. The inside sensation of your toes. Just feel it. Otherwise, you cannot make this example. The moment you fully pay attention to your toes, the internal feeling, internal feeling, can you see this color? Okay. Look at this Buddha statue. Look, everybody look at this. This this experiment you need to do. Otherwise, you always get caught up with this illusion of the mind. Look at this Buddha statue. Okay. Keep looking at this Buddha statue. Man. Okay. Now, I read some words, some words, you have to pay fully attention, carefully, fully attention to my words, each and every words, every, every letter I am saying, every sound, you have to pay fully attention. Now, suppose that in autumn, when it is raining flat, Heavy drops, water bubble, will appear and disappear on the water. And a man with good eyesight were to see it, observe it, appropriately examine it to him. Are you listening to me? Are, you have listened to me carefully. Very, very detailed you have to listen to me, my voice. You, you have to pay close attention. See it, observing it, appropriately examine it. It would appear empty, void, without substance. What happened? When you, when you pay close attention to my voice, do you see the Buddha statue? Otherwise, when you see the Buddha statue playing close attention, do you hear my sound? Hear the sound? It, it, it seems like hearing, but you, you cannot really understand what I am saying. If you Pay attention to the Buddha statue. If you pay attention to my voice completely, you cannot see the Buddha statue. That's mean this color also appear in your mind, right? The seeing cannot be done with the hearing at the same time. Because you have only one moment, one thought. We have one moment, you have only one moment and one thought at one time. You cannot have, cannot open all five senses at one time. Only one moment, one senses, one thought. So this color also not coming from outside. You can understand that even in the mm, even
you can see here there is a tree outside right there is a tree so what happened this tree uh, uh, the, through the eyes this rip this lights eh? lights lights just lights goes on right it the other side and then this ray is the one create the tree right this brain is the one that create the tree. If the brain was programmed in a way that this information, this uh, signals, this signals, right? Signals is a mountain. Then your brain shows a mountain so you never seen what really outside you seen what your brain produce one right you never see what is outside i can see it a better picture uh, Anyway, uh, the tree is the creation of your brain. That's what science says. But what the, how, when it translates into a, a Buddhist perspective, it's a mind that creates. So your eyes never able to see outside. Your eyes cannot understand this is monk. If, you, if your eyes can understand, a child also should be able to understand there is a monk. And this whole, the basic form, that image, the, 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 the colors, also created by the monk. And this is different, different colors. So, the, the totally, the sea is something happened inside. Something happened inside. You don't take this up because when you take this uh, the scientific uh, perspective, then you get another trouble later. Then the, this, this, you know, the same perspective, you look at your body. Now you see a body, right? Who says this is a body? It's your eye says or your body says? Your mind says this is body, right? And who says this is my body and this is not my body? Again, mind says that the categorization happened. Here me and here I am not. Everywhere I am not, I am here. The, my body is here. This is also another creation of the mind. So you can understand that your body is also in the mind. Not the... Your mind is in the body. This is a little bit difficult to understand. But if you understand this, you can be free from this illusion. Try to understand, try to investigate this. So the four is is basically you can see the colors but it is empty it's a, just a thought just one thought at one moment just one thought and one moment why Buddha says it is a bubble uh, the block of uh, form why Buddha says the block of form like that images, so many images together make this form. So you thinking that you see the one mark here, and you see the one color here, consistently existing one color. It's not. It's every moment it is changing. You you think that you cannot experience the past. You cannot experience the next moment or the, the previous moment. You can only experience this moment. So this moment is rapidly go to the past, isn't it? If you can see the lightning, that's mean your mind is past that lightning, right? 
otherwise you cannot see the light. So your mind is our thought is faster than lightning. So you see every moment appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. But you feel it's consistently appear, it's consistently there. So there are many, many thousand actually, so more many, many billions of thought appearing in one sight. Many, many thought appearing in one side. So it is like a four, it's like one four, but each and every, the plum of four is created is small four, and is every small four is empty. You never see something outside. You never see something out. You see it only your mind, your thought. You are, you are seeing things. You see the thoughts or thought itself is you. This thought, you know, the, the thoughts come out. One day here, I'm seeing a monk. So I am the one who's seeing the monk. This is the feeling you have. I am the one who's seeing the monk. So I am here, the Bhante here. So the Bhante and me simultaneously arise. This is the magic of the mind. Mind do the magic, which is the two side, which is not there. There is only one side here. But it quickly creates, I am the one who see that object. So that's this side and that side simultaneously arising. Duality. The two side is simultaneously arising. My, my one my feeling is I am here and looking at that side. So every moment this happening. So every moment you appearing and disappearing. You dying and born again. So this is happening very fast. So you thinking that I am always here. An object is changing. Object is changing. Now, when you look at the Buddha statue, the object is Buddha statue. But I am here. I am the one who is seeing the Buddha statue. When you look at the screen, okay, I am the one who look at the uh, screen. I am the one who look at the uh, the bante. I am the one who at the uh, cup. I am the one who look at the computer. I am the one who look at the. So I am always here. The see, the feeling is I am always here. But this thought, the thought when it is appearing, it appears, I and the world, and it when it disappears, I and the world, both cessation, it both cease. So, the suffering arise and cease in one millisecond. Appearing and say, actually, if you closely look at that, let's say like this. Did you find the appearing and disappearing of this sound? Did you see appearing and disappearing in both? Or you see the only disappear? When a cause and condition is together, is appearing and disappearing happen in the same, same way, same, same point. Is only cessation, only cessation is there. That's why Buddha says in the Dhamma Chakrabhata Sutta, at the end of the Sutta, Yang Kinche Samudaya Dhamma, Sappantam Nirodha Dhamma. If there is arising something, it arising, that is all are unborn, dumb, unborn things. So I am saying that initially your rupa, your form is not a born thing, it is unborn. It is never born. But this is the illusion of the mind. And you are liking, you know, liking to that what you see is also like a bubble that, you know, the feeling. Feeling is either you like, either you don't like, other is neutral. So you, this feeling also always changing. It doesn't have any inside substance and perception. 
that you recognize in that, that, that uh, this is a monk and this is the Buddha statue. But there is no Buddha statue outside. There is no Buddha. There is no monk here. But it seems there. It's like a mirage. Perception is like a mirage. You can see the mirage. The water is there. It's very clear. The water is there. You can see the reflection also. If there is a tree, you can see the reflection of the tree or the water. It's like very, very, very real. But when you go there and look in, examine it, and you cannot find the water. The same way, there is, it seems that outside there is a monk, outside there is a Buddha statue. But it is not. You, you, just now you see that the whole creation is happened this moment in my mind. This moment it happened. This moment it happened. It's not, it's, it's never was in the past. It's not coming from the past. Of course, you can experience only this moment, right? So this moment you're creating the monk. So each time when you're seeing a monk, monk is creating every moment. At the same time, it, it creates me. I'm the, I'm the one who's seeing the monk. It creates you and the world, you and the, what you see. This is, that's why it says, the four is like a, a, a lump of four. Feeling is like a water bubble. Perception is like a mirage. And volition, intention is like a trauma. When you feel and feel and feel inside, there's nothing. And this, this consciousness, this thought is an illusion. But even though it is illusion, you can, if you closely look at it, closely look at it, if you examine it, you can understand this. Yoni so manasikara. Paying wise attention. Paying wise attention to the phenomena. This is the way to understand the world. Understand the suffering. Understand the five aggregates. So Buddha says there is a suffering. Suffering to be understood. When you understand that suffering, or the world, or the mind, the suffering, world, and the mind, all same words. So, suffering, or the world, or the thought. Thought, it seems there. But, when you investigate the thought, you can understand that this thought was never real. And when you understand the, the cause of suffering, you can understand it's the cessation of the suffering. The understanding of the suffering, the one noble truth, understanding all four noble truths. So understanding of your mind is understanding the world and that is the end of the world, end of the suffering. There is no any other way to escape from the suffering. The only way is to understand. So Buddha says that if you want to be Sotapan, what you have to do? Four things having Kalyana Mitta. First thing is having Kalyana Mitta. Kalyana Mitta is one who talk about this. Listening to the true Dhamma, Sadhama Sava. That is, you can what you get from the outside. At the same time, what you have to do? Yoniso Manasikara, Yoniso Manasikara, paying attention to the it is origin. Paying attention to its origin. Yoni is Oman Sikara means Yoni means origin for you, starting point. Where is birth? Every thought, where is thought birth? birth, birth over. When you see the Buddha statue, go to the initial point of where the Buddha is born. Where the Buddha is born? In the No, in your mind. This moment. Look at that, how it is formed. Birth point of the Buddha statue is not Myanmar or Buddha in India or anywhere. It is right this moment, in this moment in your mind. 
even though when we say in your mind, it is not actually your mind. It is just appearing. Because you also in that thought. You also want to go. And Dharma and Dharma Patipatta. Like living in the cold Siddhartha. So these four things you have to do. Uh, and especially here, very important thing is listening to the Dharma and paying close attention to the, uh, the phenomenon. You also want to go. So, you need this kind of investigation, this kind of inquiry always, otherwise, um, you have to look at this also. This is a Paditya Sampada, dependent co-origination. With ignorance, you can understand that this world is start with the ignorance. When there is a ignorance, when there is a ignorance, when there is a ignorance, there is a consciousness. When there is a ignorance, only there is a consciousness. When there is a consciousness, only there is a Nama Rupa. But we talk now. The Nama Rupa is everything. Everything you see, everything you hear, everything, everything you experience in this world is Nama Rupa. Nama Rupa is mental formation, mental form, mental form. There is no physical form, only mental form. You cannot experience any physical form, only experience mental form. When you, when you, if there is a mental form, it's because there is a consciousness. Why there is a consciousness? It's because of the avijja. When there is avijja, there is a nama rupa. And salayati, six sense bases. We have eyes, we have ears, mouth, uh, you know, all these six senses. Is there because of your ignorance? Otherwise, when you have a if we don't have ignorance, there is no six sense space. It's, that's it. The, you know, the Nama Rupa, these six, six senses, these six senses is another Nama Rupa. Out of so many Nama Rupa, six senses is one of that, one of the Nama Rupa. So, Salayatana is there when you have ignorance. So when you have uh, five senses, now there is a contact, now there is a craving, Vedana, the, the feeling, and then there is a Tanha, the craving, and then there is a becoming. Becoming means, you know, when you look at the, uh, look, when you look at the monk, you create the monk, you create Bhangi, you, you, your thought become the real, it become real, your thought become real, it become. And then, here, then it rise, the jati, jati, birth, it give rise, it give birth to the, what you see. If you look at the Buddha statue, the, this moment you give birth to the Buddha statue. This is the jati, Buddha says, jati is suffering, birth is suffering, this jati is suffering. If, when something arising which is not there, that is the suffering. This is the birth is suffering, not that happy birthday is one. <laughs> and when there is a birth, there is an aging, death, grief, pain, sorrow, and limitation, and all these things. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question relating to the Buddha? Mm. The four people chose the first two. Buddha, and I will say that now birth is suffering, death is suffering, you part of the world. Your own death, that is suffering. So, can you explain 
extreme further on that, on how to live by your own death is suffering. From my understanding, I will be different from your son. So, it's extreme on that. So, that is suffering. Actually, Buddha do not talk about conventional death. Buddha do not talk about conventional death. Buddha talk about this instantly born and die. You know, just now I say, when you look at the Buddha statue, the Buddha statue is born. When you look at the uh, uh, Bhante, now the Buddha statue is dying. And now the, uh, the, this Bhante is born. So that moment by moment, birth and death. So what is actually that conventional death? This conventional death is another concept. The concept is arising. The thought is arising. When you think about, you know, just like Buddha, Buddha statue, you can understand that it's a concept in your mind, right? If you are, if you were a thought from the childhood, this is a Jesus Christ. This is Jesus Christ, right? So, let's say there are two children. One was taught this is a Buddha statue, and other children, uh, this is a Jesus Christ. And both come and inside and ask him to bring the Buddha statue. One child wants to bring the Buddha statue, and another child wants to bring out the Jesus Christ statue. He come here. Take what? Actually, Jesus Christ was also not here. The Buddha was also not here. The both are conceptual. This Buddha is in, in is a mental image, mental form, mental world, mental thoughts. So it is never exists somewhere. Same way, what is death? Death is not is not existing something. It is not out there. It is just a thought. It is just a concept. So that concept, of course, that when you take that concept as real. It is suffering. But that is real. No, it's not real. That is real. It's the uh, pattern of the uh, form. The what? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's say if you are a so is if you are a two years old child, let's say yeah, if you are a two years old child, your mother and father both dead in a you know accident or something, and. You see that two-year-old child doesn't have any understanding. He, he doesn't have any death. He doesn't experience death. He just play with the coffee. There is no death for him. If the, if the death is real, that child should feel it. And this is a death. When you see the uh, uh, dead body and you see another person is sleeping next to that, what is different in, inside your eye, in terms of your eyes? Is it just a seeing? What seeing? Who said this is that person is dead and that person is uh, asleep? It's your mind says this is conceptual death. That is that, that is why we take it so real. That is why we get into this samsara. We have birth. We have death. We have old age, we have uh, you know, samsara, we have next life, we have previous life, all due to ignorance. That's why I told you, all this world start with the ignorance. When there is a ignorance, consciousness is there. Now, now, death is another Nama Rupa, birth is another Nama Rupa, old age is another Nama Rupa. How old are you? Can you say without past uh, memory? If you lose all your memory now, what is your age? You just born. Just born. It's a memory create this concept. We we create our always we create a story and we, we live in that story as freedom. This is the biggest the magic of the mind, the illusion of the mind. That's what we try to understand. So death is, what the Buddha says, death is not that conventional death. Death is arising and passing away right this moment. 
how many times you did now? Each and every sound you are hearing, you born and die. This is a mental process, there is no person here. There is no person here, there is no being here. This is a thought appearing and disappearing continuously. This mind create this world, this ignorance create this world. When there is a complete cessation of the ignorance, there is no consciousness, there is no vidya, there is no namuru, there is no salaya. When, the, there, when there is a wisdom, there is no eyes. There is no uh, the five senses. So then there is no contact, no feeling, no tanha with uh, all these things. All this uh, five, the, 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 the five sound one is no more. That doesn't mean that they say, suddenly you realize today. Then after that, you disappear. No, no, you are still there. But, you understand, this is a mental process. I know it's very difficult to accept that you never born and you never die. But what the Buddha says is that. Otherwise, how will you come out of your suffering? If this world is real, how, how can you make something real not real? If suffering is real, how can it is possible to come out of suffering if it is real? If it is real, you cannot make it unreal. Buddha is not here to do magic anymore. Buddha asked us to do a magic by ourselves. So, I, 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 if there is something existing, I cannot make it non-existing. It was never born. That is why there's, there's, it never died. You never born. That's why you can never die. <laughs> hey, any more question? I think better you ask more question about it, so that we can explain about it. Always remember, the world is start with ignorance. If no ignorance, no protection of power. With ignorance, start with ignorance. That's why Buddha put the ignorance, avijja as the first one. With ignorance, everything is there. Without ignorance, there is no world. There is no need to talk about the birth of the world or death of the world. Rising and cessation is there when there is a Ignorance. Yeah. But then, um, this five aggregates, this understanding, is something that we do, um, like we try to do intellectually, we're trying to understand them. Is this something that we're going to also try to understand on the cushion when we're meditating? Or only the emptiness of it is what we concentrate on our meditation? Yeah, you can do it in a cushion also, you can do it in the chair also, you can do it in the walking also, you can do it in the lying down also, you can do it anywhere, any any place where you are awake. Uh, you know, the a lot of people think that meditation is the way to med uh, enlightenment. Meditation itself is not the way to enlightenment. Understanding this one is the way to uh, uh, the, the enlightenment. So understanding, you have to have an equal mind that your soul wants to be paying attention, you know, uh, you know, disengage, disengage, you know, dismantle, dismantle, everything and go back to this origin. Go back to this origin. Go back to this origin. It's like, you know, now you see a Buddha statue. What I am seeing? How this seeing happen? How this Buddha still to become his dissection? Just now we understand that this sea is happening here in the mind. And then this sea happens, and then I put the old uh, uh, wording for that. This is Buddha statue. If you are new.
you born child if you you know if you don't have all your memory now can you see a buddha statue can you? so the buddha statue is in your memory right Good. you go to the very first day you see the buddha statue very first day did you see the buddha statue you didn't see the very first day because there is no buddha statue there you see this 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 color you see but that day there is no buddha statue and someone says this is buddha this is buddha but even though without this sun someone says buddha statue is any buddha statue coming no actually it is not coming from the words also it is not coming from the sun also it is totally coming inside create using two senses sight and sound make make it together and make a concept that concept is that i am seeing now conceptual buddha statue i am seeing even when say i am seeing it's not that i am here to see that is the ignorance that i am here to see but that seeing itself is the create this two side i am the one who see is create two side duality both side so this investigation you have to do at any time but when you have kind of concentration kind of stimuli just while you running 400 meters you cannot do this up you have to sit down sometime and your mind should have kind of you know kind of stillness 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 is not that like a jhana level stillness just to inquire this one continuously i mean to 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 complete the the total process of the inquiry maybe 10 minutes if your mind is still for 10 minutes continuously you inquire this one then suddenly you realize the whole world is a mental formation is a nava rupa once you fully realize fully realize fully realize this one you cannot hold it anymore that world is out there when there is no outside there is no inside so outside is ceasing inside is ceasing that is called cessation of the mind the cessation of the mind or speak so that for the very first time experiencing the nibbana very first time experiencing that cessation of the mind is called enlightenment enlightenment means that, you know that's the very first time experience the enlightenment so once you experience this one there is no go back because you have seen it so when you see it means that you see that everything's coming from the mind when the mind is no more there there is no world you experience it That's why in a Buddha's Buddha time, the people enlighten right away when they are listening. Because while they are listening, they are paying attention, close attention, they investigate. Only first part of the Dhamma talk, they are listening. The second part of the Dhamma talk, they investigate themselves inside. Right away they see the reality, true nature of reality. It's not happened only in the Buddha's time. Even now also happened. A lot of the people thinking that while listening to Dhamma talk, it's not possible to attain Sotapa. It's possible. The people are attaining. One thing. One thing. question here. I woke up this morning, early morning, and I was still lying in bed. Doing something. And I feel that my body is rising. I've been scared. Then, together with it, wait a minute. And this was actually then I was I I was aware I'm aware of it, and I told myself, this is the mind playing the trick on me. So I just watch, watch the rising, and watch the coming. Then eventually it stopped. It stopped. Right now, quite. So this is the mind 
Pretty yeah. Much. When you practicing the mind, though, when you do meditation, there are so many tricks coming. The uh, mind try to make you scared. <coughs> or giving you kind of good feeling. You know, giving you kind of good feeling, you know. Somehow it try to either attract and somehow try, try to attract you. Giving sudden something, that unexpected something. So then you attract, you forget, you forget about this and you attract to this one. That, that feeling. Or is, you know, even you scared also, you have already attract. Means that you think that is real. So the mind plays different, different tricks. Sometimes you feel like light you can see, sometimes you know, different, different you know, feelings coming, you know, the body feeling coming, and some, some sounds coming. All these are mind makers. Even now also you hear the sound, is a magic, in a way. You, 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 you know, now, you hearing, right? You hearing this, you know, when I'm talking like this, every meaning is given by you. You are not hearing something from outside. You, 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 you let's say, you hearing some sound from outside. You are the one who create, translate into the meaning, right? Every words, every sound you're creating, right? Every sound you're creating, right? So what you hear is only you hear, right? Not other people here. So it is your mind is creating this sound here. Right? So this moment, you creating this moment. So it's, this also is a magic of the mind. This moment. You think that somebody else is talking. That is your thinking, right? But actually happening is this magic of the trick is happening always. But when you know it, this is. Yeah, when you know it. You know, this is a, just a, some manipul, just just some drama film is displaying, and then you're not attached to it, or you don't have any aversion to it. How can I, I aversion or attach? Because you 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 don't give any value to it. Once you don't give any value, means there is no grasping. There is no grasping. The consciousness cannot. Last cannot stay. So then suddenly consciousness this will be not grasping. If you grasp at any is little grasping enough for you to survive. We don't completely let go, completely realize this is just an illusion. The grasping is the moment the grasping is released, the consciousness is. Next moment, again consciousness coming, but at least you can experience it. Pante, I would like to know uh, if uh, suffering is a illusion, so how to tackle the pain during meditation? I mean, the physical pain. Thank you, Pante. Mm. Physical pain during the meditation. Yeah. What kind of pain you mean? Is leg pain? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a leg. Physical, sometimes leg, sometimes hand. Hand. Because I have some medical problem. Then don't do that posture. <coughs> then do, you, you, you don't have to stay a particular way to meditate. You, you can stay whatever comfortable way to, for you to uh, stay. Don't do any hard practice. Listen, now you feel pain. Now when you're sitting here, do you feel pain? Uh, yes, also. It's mm. too long, also pain. Mm. So, too long is pain. I also pain now. <laughs> I mean, you know that uh, it's normally unless that you are uh, going to the jhana states, jhana state, then you don't you don't feel the you know the sensation is not very visible, very uh, obvious, you know. Unless you go to jhana state, otherwise you feel this pain, this pain, and that pain. That is the body. How that this body is uh, in a way, you know, that that's how this the, the is structured. Uh, 
if you feel pain and change the posture. That is the one way. Uh, otherwise, uh, when you feel pain while sitting, you start to walk. Uh, then change the, the, that one, the, you know, alternatively. In other words, in, in other ways, when the, the, feet, the pain coming, you investigate that pain. Investigate that pain. To where that this pain is coming? Is to my body or is to my mind? Because your body, you know, the, the, your body is, uh, uh, let's say, let's say you, you tell that like, when, like this, you feel pain. If you sleep like this, do you feel pain? If you sleep like this, you don't feel pain, right? So means that your, you know, your, your mind is not active. Only mind is active, you feel pain. So understand this pain. Also another thought. Another thought. So you, suddenly you react, rather than suddenly you reacting to the this pain, this thoughts. And also you can understand that once the thought, pain coming, so many stories come into your mind. Or oh, this pain can be this because of that, because of this. I'm going to have this and that, I'm, uh, I'm not a good meditator, uh, you know, you play into yourself. So many thoughts come. Observe these thoughts. Observe this categorization. Observe this judgment. And also understand these all are mind creating now drama here. Uh, with a totally creating. Well, watch that totally story. And when you see this story of the mind and this pain of the mind, the, the pain also come as a thought and associate all these thoughts, you realize that this pain is not so much and this pain is not something to, uh, you know, so something to fear about, it's something to worry about it. and you disen disengage, you disenchant it, you're not grasping that pain as pain, so definitely this pain will reduce. Pain will reduce means what happened? Your the value of your thought become lesser and lesser. The grasping of that thought is become lesser and lesser. And you don't when you don't care at all, the pain is disappear. Actually, pain is disappear means the thought is no more there. The pain thoughts. So investigate it. One way is investigate it. Paying attention to that, seeing it clearly, seeing it deeply, or we call vipassana. Meditate, vipassana, in, you know, the seeing deeply that pain. That is the ultimate solution, that ultimate answer for that pain. Before that, if it's constantly, if you don't have that courage to face that pain like that, you change the force. And you don't have to meditate so tightly, so suffering. Then you suffer to end the suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we suffer to sustain the suffering. Buddha's method is very, very easy method. No need to suffer to end the suffering. So that means I have to accept it to sit shorter time. I cannot sit. Last is different. It's not always, uh, it's a rarely I can do that. Yeah, you used to, yeah, yeah, I think you, you have some kind of experience. It's the pain, but it's a physical, it's a, uh, we, we, it's a, it's a pain is there. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the pain is there, pain is real. Pain is, real. Uh, yeah. pain is not real again. Pain is not, pain is not real means 
it's real, it is real for you, you feel it. But it is a mental pain, you have to understand, it's a mental pain. It's a mental pain, Namaru, again Namaru. There is nothing else you can experience in this world other than the thoughts, the uh, 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 mind, the mental process. So investigate it. The, investigate the pain. Pain is here or here. You, 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 when you investigate, you will realize it. Since you have meditation experience, you know, the, uh, so you, you can meditate on that pain. Otherwise, you just change the posture and uh, observe something else to investigate. Take something else to investigate. Because you, you don't have to investigate everything. If you understand one thing, whatever thing, if you understand the food that starts you, that's all, that's finished. If you understand your pain, what, you, you understand it. It's your whole world. Because one thought, understanding one moment is understanding every moment. Because every moment having the same process. So, if it is very difficult for you, just let it go. No need to worry about it. You, you can do it. so many other uh, objects for meditation. You can take so many other things for meditation, object, vipassana. For vipassana, everything is object. Anger also an object. Jealousy also an object. Feeling lust also object. Drinking water also object. Even those, everything is subject. Going to toilet also object. Actually, if you have, only if you have that kind of mindfulness, that, that throughout the day, you will experience at any point that cessation of the mind. Yeah, and also, the, the, you know, the sometimes we are so attached to our meditation practice or so some any kind of practice. So attached, we think that. Without doing this one, I cannot enlighten or I cannot be free. No, there is no such thing. If you cannot do this one, you do something else. But the important thing is you are increasing your mind. And the important thing is your attention to this moment. The mindfulness, awareness of this moment. Whenever these changes happen, see, once you see this one, sometime, you get used to that. Then your mindfulness become like habitually is there, always there. So then when always, whenever you do, whenever you walk, whatever you do, you know that what is happening here. Even when you go to the shopping, also you back of your mind, you know that what is going on here. So it make it, make the mindfulness become a habit. Right, right. It means that always is if you are mindful what is hungry, what's, what's going on. Yeah, one last question. How is the cessation of mind space? What is the cessation of mind space? Cessation of the mind, how, how the condition, no, what the question? How is the condition of cessation of the mind? Who to feel? And what to feel? Because who and what and everything is the mind. When the cessation of the mind, but who is there to experience it? You will understand. You, so I have to say this one, otherwise, how can I address you? Know? You will understand that there is no one here, there is no self here. You means not this body and this mind. Because this body and mind both sees that time. So, now, after that, don't ask. Who will understand? Nobody understands. You understand the answer. 
When I say you, it's not this you. What's your name? Uh, Floyd. Floyd. It's not Floyd understand. If Floyd cannot enlighten. If Floyd enlightened, then there is a self enlightened, right? So Floyd is but conventionally true. Is actually Floyd is enlightening, going to enlighten or oh, enlightening. But that is not true. Ultimately it's not true. Because the moment cessation of consciousness is who to sleep? I ask you, when you are in deep sleep, who is sleeping? When you are in deep sleep, who is sleeping? After you wake up, you say, I, I slept. Before you sleep, you say, I'm going to sleep. But deep sleep, who sleep? Who to answer, who to ask? Who is there to answer or who is there to experience deep sleep? Who is there to experience deep sleep? But when we wake up, you can say, ah, I had a good sleep. Once you realize the session of the consciousness, again the consciousness arising no, after. It's not stopping forever. So again, when you again, again if the consciousness is coming, and then you realize. The moment cessation of consciousness, no, nobody realizes. At least nature. You are the nature. You are the whole universe. You are the whole existence. You are the universal consciousness. That is for you to understand this now. But these also just a word something. Very simple yet very subtle idea. But somehow we caught up with this mind of the magic, but it is possible to wake up from this dream of existence. So this is like a dream. You know, in the dream you can feel the body. If somebody hit you in the dream, you feel the hit the pain, right? Somebody talk in the dream, you hear, right? Somebody see in the dream, you see. But your eyes is closed. But you see how the mind is, right? You hear. You talk to someone in the dream. And that person also talk. And you also uh, answer back. Actually, who talk? That person never come to in your dream, right? It's you talk and you answer, right? And you answer back, right? So now what happened? Now we also have one, the same thing. It is your mind now to, now, now when I when you know when I talking, actually your mind is talking. When you talking, also you talking. So this is a one way. <laughs> this is just watching the movie and just watch it. We only can do is watch it. We try to become a director of this movie. Then the <laughs> The movie is ongoing with the whole so many scary scenes, so many beautiful scenes also. There's some scary scenes also. But this continuous life, because this director don't know that he also acting one of the characters in that movie and he feels all the problems uh, in, the, in, the, in the movie. And somehow he created the, that character and other character also. And then same time he angry with the other character. But he is the one who created the other character also. And there is another uh, character that he fall in love with other character. But also that character also created by him. So instead of directing this film, just watch this film. So it will end. The moment you stopping the directing, become a watcher, definitely it should be, it, 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 it must be stopped very, very soon. But no, it takes so much courage, so much effort, effort not to direct, effort to become a watch, watcher. So when you have a faith, you only do Virya, effort, effort is not to do something. 
Efforts, you don't need effort to do something. You need effort not to do something. And then your sati is, you need to develop the mindfulness, sadha, various sati, then the samadhi. Samadhi is not jani samadhi. Samma samadhi, noble samadhi is arising. While you are in the pasamalam also, that samadhi is there. And Fatna is arising. Sati, sadha, vidya, sati samadhi, brahma. High spiritual faculties is need to develop. Uh, so with that uh, understanding, with that and more and more understand this process, more and more we will be free from this process. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much, Mahmoud for giving us this very masterfully delivered Sutta analysis and Dhamma sharing. Infused in a lot of very powerful and insightful anecdotes, analogies, and analysis, which really help us to understand the Sutta a lot better and to grasp this whole concept of like emptiness of the aggregates. So um, right now we would like to respectfully request Mante to lead us in the sharing of merits, aspirations, and closing salutations. My brothers and sisters, you may again refer to the pink book on your sides. Tenth page number forty-one. Sharing news to all the day ones and all the departed ones and all the sensible beings. Forty-seven. Page number 41, we decide to do that. Akasatra chakumata deva naga mahindika punyata manuhonitva chiram rakam tuloka sasana. Akasatra chakumata deva naga mahindika punyata manuhonitva chiram rakam tudesana. Akasatha Chavumata Deva Nata Mahitika Punyanta Namumoditva Chirangrakantu Mamparam Ethavata Chamini Sambatam Punya Sambatam Sapi Deva Sapi Saka Sapi Bhuta Namodanto Sapa Sampati Siddhiya Idam pe punya vaga mata pitu nancha achaya nancha sabha sata nancha sabha mita nancha sabha nyati nancha sabha peta nancha sabha devata nancha bhajena idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyata Idam go nyati nam go tu sukita hum tu nyata yo Idam no nyati nam ho tu sukita hum tu nyata yo Make aspiration Imina punya kamina mami bala samagamo Satan samagamo tu yava 